I known Glenn River for 35 years, give or take. We met in New Paltz, New York. He was a really good friend of my husband, um, Michael Malcolm Mitchell. We had moved to New Paltz because I was a student there. Lived in New Paltz. Glenn visited us. We lived in actually several places in New Paltz and also in Rosendale. And Glenn was frequently there before and after our son was born. That was uh, 1984. So over the years, uh, Glenn, of course, is a totally dedicated artist. He is consumed with this. Uh, he's driven by <laughs> a need to be creative and express himself in a variety of ways. Uh, he's written songs and plays and poetry and music, and uh, but his paintings always, to me, were particularly impressive and interesting and hypnotic. Um, he's got extensive training and formal training, and he's a very creative, philosophical, spiritual being. And uh, the reason why Glenn and I became close, I was saying that he's a friend of my husband's, that's how we met, but we uh, used to talk when my husband would fall asleep, he was a little bit older than, <laughs> and he would have to sleep earlier. And Glenn and I would stay up all hours of the night talking about philosophy, Plato, and um, the meaning of life, and, you know, any ideas, any truth, what truth is, and if we can know it, and how, and we're constantly investigating this and trying to come up with some kind of unified field theory on why we're here and what we should be doing while we are here and uh, the creative process and how human the human activity the human experience of expressing what what happens to us and how we feel about it so at any rate uh, because Glenn would visit so often he would have in a different uh, series of paintings as examples that he would show us that he was working on. He's so prolific. Um, if he took a trip out to the Grand Canyon, which he did, um, he'd come back with, you know, 50 million paintings of the Grand Canyon. They were beautiful um, and all different and yet all kind of, the, anyway, and all sizes and color interpretations. So... I'm, you know, ooing and eyeing over it, and then he would just give me one, you know, <laughs> because it was just, he was generous, and he, I guess he knew that I appreciated the paintings, and of course I love the paintings, so, you know, he would, anytime he would go through a series like that, I would end up with one of them, and uh, then, you know, things like when my son was born, he gave me a beautiful picture or painting of um, Madonna and Child, and that was very special to me. And he's done uh, landscapes and things of um, um, Mystic, Connecticut, I think was one place, and Provincetown, uh, Cape Cod, you know, where I, my heart and soul reside. And I, and so he, he, he's done some paintings of that and he gave me paint cause he knows that I love Cape Cod. So for various reasons, I would end up, you know, <laughs> getting these beautiful paintings. And of course, uh, Rosendale, Glenn, uh, ended up living in our, in the house that we had when, after our son was born, uh, Michael Paul Mitchell, uh, we bought this house in Rosendale and, uh, after uh, Mike died, which was in, what was that, 91, um, Glenn was live, took over living in the house. I mean, it was a blessing because I didn't know what to do with the place. We were down in Peekskill with, near my family and stuff, and uh, Glenn just you know took care of the house up in Rosendale for years. I don't know, maybe 10 years, probably 10 years, and... Uh, 
anyway, then other s- things happened. And I had to, uh, we had to change that arrangement, and I ended up selling that house in Rosendale just recently, actually. But uh, when Glenn left there, he left a lot of his paintings. That you know, because he's so prolific, he had so many that the the thirty five that he left with me. <laughs> was just a drop in the bucket he didn't even he was like he was grateful that it, there was a place because he didn't have any storage anyway for he plays to store them all anywhere he's moving in with it with freddie his sister who's got a tiny little place you know a massive load of paintings from from that whole experience and uh every time uh every birthday christmas i get a painting and these uh, beautiful la- um, abstract landscapes. It's the only way I can describe them. They're, at any rate, um, because they're so colorful. And I love the colors, you know. And then now, uh, Glenn's working on these chakra paintings, which are... And and Glenn and I have, you know, such a... We still philosophize and talk late into the night, you know, the way we did 35 years ago. <laughs> and we we've both kind of gone along the same road in a, in philosophically and m- more importantly spiritually because that is our true you know the quest is a spiritual communion with all that is and we have talked about you know we at any rate that is our so the chakra paintings and especially since I'm a uh, really serious qigong student now and didn't know anything about Chinese philosophy or anything at all. Um, the chakra paintings are giving me a, a whole definite. It's just funny that no matter what phase we find ourselves going through, Glenn and I, we, there's a confluence of, you know, um, philosophical camaraderie there. We end up with the same subject. So he just gave me this beautiful painting for my birthday which is July 14th coming up and uh, of the chakras and I can use it as meditation and um, it's just wonderful. So uh, I'm not sure how many paintings I have now, maybe 50 at this point. Um, And uh, we, every single one of them has a story behind it. I could, you know, describe how I acquired the painting basically when and what it is if it's a New York City landscape I would know you know the era of that if it were one of these really geometric abstract large mural type paintings I would know that that was a much later period that was when he was working with like the fractals on the computer and stuff like that and that was much later and then the earlier very early ones um the um, still life with the f- fruits and, you know, studies of uh, real things, you know, r- pretty real, but very colorful, too. It, it was, you could just see the, you know, the progress, you could see the progression. And, you know, chronologically, I could probably, not not everything, but give a pretty good rundown on, on a period. So, um now I guess I'm an official collector. <laughs>